So it's time to do some work on the planter. Dad and I went through and uh, took all the trash whippers off. Travis, why did we do that? Uh, cause we got a different style altogether coming. We hope. We, we were hope. just told that they were shipping April 4th. And granted, it's not like we have a set date as to when we're gonna plant, but you wanna be, rather be ready when the time comes than have to get ready when we should have been planting. So with everything that's going on, we got the waves. I'm finishing that up right now. Hold up, what wave? What's a wave? Um, the seed firmers that we've been running are like this. Uh, they actually put the liquid out the back directly on the seed uh, with the 360 waves. Instead of doing that, we're actually gonna be putting the liquid down three quarters of an inch off to the side, which is a plus because we're not putting any of that salt directly on the seed. But with these, the reason I don't like these is because the they like to catch little. because these outside three rows are actually folded forward so it doesn't take very much to catch these because they hang down so low mm -hmm. if you look on the other rows um, the 360 wave comes with its own seed disc or seed firmer and it doesn't hang down nearly as low it's actually above the, the gauge wheels so there's the seed firmer right here and uh, Here's the wave. Which now the liquid gauge wheels up. will come up down here. Yep. It, it actually follows the seed trench. It's going down behind the seed and it's laying a part of the sidewall over on top of the seed, as opposed to using drag chains where you're trying to get a better seed trench. Or just the regular closing wheels, which is all we had. Yep. Well, the problem is when you do that, you run the risk of that that seed trench opening back up and exposing that seed and potentially affecting your emergence. By going this route, you're laying over a layer of moist soil out of the sidewall and you're actually laying a blanket of soil on top of that seed that's supposed to eliminate uh, the risk of the soil cracking back open and exposing that, that corn seed or soybean seed. So he's just wrapping up now. He's got 11 of 12 done and he's pretty much got it worked down to a science now. He just said it'll take you about 45 minutes you expect to do this row, so. Yep, when you, it's called repetition, 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 because the first row took me about an hour and a half and I cut it down to, to half that. But um, I don't know, we're just trying to increase the performance of our, of our planter. Trying different things. Yeah. Well, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you want to try to improve yields, you got to be willing to try something different. Well, the 4640 is heading up the road. It's a lot better than heading down the road. The road cleaners for the planter just came in. We're going up to put them on in a heated shop that Nutrient has. cleaning wheels that go on the front. There's a flat side and a curved side. So because of this planter and what you have mounted on there, we're gonna go with uh, the mounting bracket that came with. There's actually four different kits for mounting brackets so that they can be compatible with the different brands. What's the planters. advantage of these over the row units or the row cleaners we had? Well the first thing is you can adjust them from the cab. Okay. So on L new row cleaners going forward, as long as I can get them, I'm going to go with this style. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of aftermarket companies like Yetter, Martin, Don, they all make different closing wheel systems. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge with those is uh, if they're mounted to the front of your row unit, then they can affect your row unit right. I um, heard row unit chatter. Yeah, yeah. So 
These, because they're not mounted to the front of the row unit, your airbags are not going to be competing with them for downforce. It's going to be a lot easier to get that row unit into the ground, and you're going to have a lot more consistent, clean path in front of those disc openers. So this is the first complete planner. So these just came in uh, yesterday uh, to us. So I've got three planners um, of reveal uh, to put on this year. So this is the first one we're doing, so we're going to get a little bit of Learn as you go. Learning as we go here with the instructions. So my goal is on the next plan I do, I don't have to look at these, but we'll be looking and referencing the instructions a lot. Precision does a really good job of putting their instructions for all their kits right on their site, just cloud.precisionplanning.com. Um, I actually just printed these off. So uh, there's going to be all the instructions for uh, each different model of planner in here, so we'll have to look to make sure that they are specific to, to this planner as we go. So the first step we're going to do is remove the parallel arm bolts on one side of the row unit. My thought is let's do one row and get one row on. And then we and can then all we figure out to the rest. how to do it. Okay. So I wasn't aware that we had a switchboard in the cab to adjust it from the tractor. I thought it was on the tank. That's cool. No, yeah. You'll have the box in the tractor to... Increase or decrease the pressure there. How many PSI would we be running at, do you think? Uh, a lot of guys are going to run, uh, on the, at least on the clean sweeps, we've been running around 20 pounds of lift or 20 pounds of downforce. Okay. Um, it'll go up to over 100. Oh, wow. So, I don't know. This Again, this is one of the first ones we're doing. It'll be, sometimes we can raise a whole planter up with it. You know, you have enough pressure on there. Yeah. If you don't want them to dig in at all, there's that top notch up there. Um, otherwise, you're going to probably typically run them, you know, about that setting. That's about where we want the clean sweep to run, just so they're not turning all the time and not digging. But either one of these middles. So that's going to be a little bit more aggressive. That's going to be very little aggressiveness. So those are the two most common. But this gauge wheel is the real key. To, that's what makes these work is because this is always running on clean ground now. So. You don't have to worry about this being on residue and then those being just somewhat effective like the standard clean sweep systems. So. And I'm a, we're also going to set these up so that they're staggered. Um, the other way that you can have them, you can have them in the middle hole down here and then they'll be somewhat interlocking and they'll turn like this, but that is a lot more aggressive as well. Okay. So I think most guys are going to run, run them in those holes in that setting there. If it's set this, even the way they were set before, you know, you're going to go through spots before because it was fixed, and you'd hit, be digging in some spots and not even touching the ground in other spots. These are across the whole planter going to be uniform as far as because because they're air, and they're going to travel um, separately too. So, that's I'm excited about these. Just cut, it'll be basically 30 inch lengths row to row with a T in between. Okay. So here's all the T's and here's the cutter. So do that till you get to the end. When you get to the last row, obviously there's no T, it'll just come out of the right. second last T right. down. It's always as you're sitting in the seat of the tractor. So on our left, okay. So, these are the hardware bags. The leading one, they want to be this bolt. So the, these two bolts are a little bit different in length. Okay. See that? So they actually colored them, made them yellow zinc so that you can tell it's a longer one. It makes it easy when installing it. 
the longer one's going to get two spacers on it. This is the cleaner. So it's going to be bolt, scraper, two spacers, nut. That wasn't too bad. No. So this is your the, first set of reveal. This is the, the first whole planner reveal. So if anybody's looking to put this on, I guess the biggest thing that I learned off of it is uh, when we looked at the W plates, uh, we could walk around to the other side. Or right here. So so there's multiple styles of brackets that you can get to mount the reveal on. And uh, in this case on the deer planners, uh, this is your W bracket. And this has parallel arms inside. Uh, when I stopped and looked, I looked across the planner, looked like it was all inside, but I didn't catch that the very two rows in the middle had the parallel arms on the outside of the W bracket. They actually make a separate um, bracket for that. Uh, we yeah. just, to get improvised. it done, we improvised <laughs> today to make it work. So, yeah. so every planner is going to be a little different um, on the setup. Um, there's different adjustments. We'll probably have a video out there in the field this year where we can uh, make some of the adjustments to the depth um, as this goes. But this is the standard setup, standard configuration that is recommended right now. So I'm excited to see it run. Cool. Yeah, you too. I think it'll do a tremendous job. Yeah. Now here's a question for those of you who are farmers. What planter tractor are you using this year? Let me know down in the comments below. I want to give a huge thank you to Andrew Tucker, our friendly neighborhood agronomist, for setting us up with those reveal row cleaners and uh, getting them to us before planting. I also want to give him and Mike David a huge thank you for helping us install the row cleaners. Um, we started roughly, and I want to say by the time we got the 46 up there, it was sometime after nine. And uh, by the time we got done, it was just after seven o'clock. So um, having as many people as we could there to help us put it together really sped things along. So thank you, Andrew and Mike. I also want to give you guys a thank you for letting us use Nutrien's shop. And I want to thank Nutrien for allowing us to bring the 46 up there and put them on. It's a lot better than crawling around in the dirt. And uh, when you drop a bolt, at least you can find it a little bit better. At least, you know, the thing I found or discovered that I didn't really know before is that on concrete when you drop something it doesn't bounce just once or twice uh, it pretty much zooms away <laughs> so yeah if you can catch it in time um, usually you know you can keep a pretty good track of your stuff but uh, yeah I'm excited to see how those roll cleaners perform I think that they're going to do a fantastic job compared to what we've been running in the past which you know is just kind of set and forget um, having these I can tell you now is going to make a huge difference and uh, I'm excited to see how they perform. So uh, we'll be showing how they perform in a future video. So be sure to check back with us once planning starts. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All How Farms Work. And with that, I'll see you next time.